Good afternoon, everyone. Yeah. This meeting is now called to order. I will have the invocation by Steve, please. Thank you. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us this opportunity to come together for the betterment of our local community. Thank you for giving us the ambition to try and do better all the time, that we do this for us, not for I or any other single meaning, but we do it for the community members and their betterment. In your name, amen. 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 Welcome, everyone. And I know there's a lot here that I don't know, so well, Mr. Claiborne, I do know. But from down, would you please give me your name, please? Just so everyone can get acquainted with us here. Uh, my name is Chris Phillips, and I'm the pastor of River of Life Church. See. Uh, my name is Will Smith, and I'm the pastor of New Beginners Christian Center. My name is Michael Onifer, and I am not the pastor of Restore Church in Jacksonville. <laughs> My name is Don Carter, and I am I'm also the uh, chairman for the Community Veterans Engagement Group as well. Thank you. I'm Pamela Trassen, the Community Engagement Coordinator, City of Jacksonville. I'm Tracy Jackson, Community Engagement Manager, City of Jacksonville. Lily Gray, Director of Community Engagement, City of Jacksonville. Andrew Cassell, Project Manager, City of Jacksonville. Steve Forney, member of the Community Engagement uh, Advisory Committee. Okay. Gordon Marshall. And Gordon Marshall. <laughs> and Ms. Whitney, if you don't mind, um, I would like to point out that, oh, I'm sorry. Did we introduce him for us. Hmm? He's a visitor. Well, you introduce your visitor. Okay, all right. Kenyatta Ken Uring, retired major, United States Marine Corps. Mm -hmm. Thank you for coming. These two. Okay. Brian Jackson, Jacksonville City Council, leads on to the Community Engagement Committee. Okay, everyone. Um, I just wanted to add, because I know you weren't here at the last meeting, but um, Mr. Claiborne, Pastor Phillips, and Bishop Smith are uh, members that have been appointed to this group. Okay. And Mr. Onifer and Mr. Carter are filling our leadership development slots. So they will okay. be the um what we used to call shadow members okay i don't like i used to be yes ma'am <laughs> okay thank you i know somebody had seen the book but i had seen it too okay so we have a um an appointment tonight a reappointment and it's gordon marshall and steve Forney. and we will ask uh, nice to meet you, sir. here's a pen to present them with their pens you're the liaison okay that's fine yeah not like, take care of it Thank you, sir, for serving and <laughs> continuing to serve. <laughs> right, all right. Okay. For your new three-year term. Yes, sir. Thank you for your previous service and your continued service for the next three years. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. And it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. <laughs> Could I have an adoption to uh, approve the agenda, please? Motion to approve. The motion agenda. to approve the agenda. I'm sorry. Motion to approve the okay, agenda. Okay, motion to approve the agenda. All approved? Yes. Second. 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 Do you have a copy from the last, the 25th meeting? We make a motion according to the, uh, if there is any necessary amendments that we need to make to the minutes. We can do so. But I need to have a, a motion to approve the minutes, please. You actually don't have a copy at your seat. They were emailed, but if yeah. anybody mm -hmm. would like okay, a copy, you, don't have you do one. have some. I, got um, I wasn't here at the meeting. So oh, you were not <laughs> Okay. She had put a copy. And you uh, have one to sign, Ms. Whitney. Hmm? You have a copy to sign? Yeah, I signed it, and uh, yes, it's, 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 Pamela has the copy. Yes, two people, I guess. But but be he's passing some down. <laughs> Are we looking for a motion? Yes. yes. Yeah, I'll make a motion that we adopt the minutes. Okay. With the necessary correction. 
It has been moved, motion that yes, the minutes be approved. May I have a second, please? I'll second. It has been moved and properly second that the minutes be approved. All now we move on to the minutes. I beg your pardon? Aye. I think we're not. Okay. <laughs> now, for the Office of Elections. I shouldn't do that part. Election of offices. Um, Election of offices. Yes, ma'am. We um, are required to um, adopt or elect a chair and a vice chair right. each, each year. Ms. Whitney has served as chairperson for two years. Ms. Um, Paula, who's not here tonight, has served as vice chair for two years, so they are not eligible for reappointment. So tonight, um, we would ask that you would nominate from the floor amongst your members someone to serve as chair and someone to serve as vice chair. Those appointments are for one year terms with an option to be reappointed in a second consecutive year. And after that, you cannot be reappointed. So, Mr. Chairman, you can call. For, I don't nominate. You can call for nomination. You can ask them to nominate. Oh, I'm asking them to nominate someone that you might feel that would want to be the chairperson for this board, please. Because usually I excuse myself. <laughs> From that. If you like to nominate oh. yourself, you can do that also. Based on continuity, I would like to nominate Marsha Wright to be chair. Okay. Marsha Wright. Oh, and she's not even here, but uh, I still called her name out. She just came, but <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> I've just been nominated for chair first, so uh, just sit. <laughs> we we yeah. thought you were not in attendance, and that's, that's how normally you. Yeah. Yeah. That's what right. you get Okay. Yeah. So I nominate Marsha Wright to be chairperson. Well, I would have to decline. Hmm. Okay. All right. Hmm. Someone, please, Chair anyone. Chair. Come on. You can Everybody do it. Anybody volunteer to be chair? I beg pardon? Can we have a volunteer? <laughs> All right, I nominate Mr. Claiborne. Okay. Chair. Uh, <laughs> I will second that nomination. Okay. Do it quickly. <laughs> mm -hmm. so you want me to say, Lauren? Say that you accept the nomination. Oh, now we have to vote. Have to vote. Okay, yeah, oh, but I'm oh, waiting I, for I, him to I say. I motion that the nominations be closed at this time. Okay. okay. I'm going to remember this, Stephen. <laughs> I, it has been said, and a motion has been made that Mr. Claiborne will be the chairperson for this committee. Yeah. But now we have to vote on it. For one, one year? Mm -hmm. Is it one year? One year. Okay, for one year, and then you approve afterwards. I think Marsha set me up, didn't she? You want to be the vice chair? Yeah, yeah no. that's for the vote. Yeah, that was now, can we have everybody vote, please, that he be? Yeah. Vote for Mr. I, Claiborne? I, I, I say aye. Okay. Thank you, Pastor. I don't think we can. Is it a consensus? We can't vote. Oh, yes. okay. Okay. No, we just Do the, the ayes have it? Yes. Okay, the ayes have it. Mr. Claiborne, you are now the chairman of could I take your seat and you take this? Wait, 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 wait. wait. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm ready. Give, give me a week at least to get my breath. It's going to be effective at the next meeting. But I will add, for those that are considering um, this nomination, know that the staff provides a lot of support to you. We make this yeah, you as smooth process as possible, so don't fear. Um, taking okay, so this so it's nothing I fear. It's what I say. <laughs> That's what I fear. Now, do we have to vote for a vice chair also? You need to nominate a vice chair, yes, ma'am. But I have a motion, uh, a nomination for someone for vice chair. Gordon? Yes, no, ma'am. I mean, I would decline. <laughs> would you like it, Marcia? No, my problem is I have a standing conflict with this meeting, which oh, is why okay. I'm yeah. rushing mm -hmm. to get here back and forth. And I chaired from 87 to 2014, so. Yeah, and I was in there, too. Uh, I would like Waiting. to nominate uh, Mr. Phillips. I, I have to decline. I discussed okay. this with Lily. I just, for the next year, I'm in the middle of a major okay. uh, building project. So okay. I, I may yeah. have times when I just simply will not be able to be here. So. Anyone else would like to? That leaves Mr. Smith. Mm -hmm. Mr. Smith, what about yeah, you? Up, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a great idea. Mr. Smith. You'd be his vice? Okay. He's saying yes? I do that. Okay. You still have to vote, right? Yeah, still have to vote. Okay. It has been nominated that, I mean, Mr. Smith. What's your first name? Will. 
My motion as the, the vice uh, chair. Nominations be closed. Mm -hmm. Nomination for the vice chair, and we thank you for that. And then those will be all we need is just you two, and we will help yeah, you out yeah, all. Got to vote. Now we have to vote on it. Mm -hmm. Did somebody second the closing nomination? I second. But we vote on the first though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. then yeah. 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 I'm ready to. We're he ready. seconded it, yeah. 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 but we have to vote on Mr. Smith. We're closing. All in favor? Yeah. Please. Aye. Aye. All right, the ayes have. Did you get that, Pam? Got it. They are in favor. He'll be good. Thank you, Mr. Congratulations. Smith. Congratulations. 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 Okay. If I missed three in a row, you can take over, right? Okay. Let's see. Election of officers. We finished with that. That's good. Public service presentation. Do you want me to give a uh, planning board update? No, I'm sorry, Mrs. Forney. We're going to do you after um, Mr. Cassell because okay. he has to leave. Yep. Okay, yeah, he's after. Well, Public service announcement. Thank you all for having me this evening. Um, I'm going to talk to you just a little bit about the York Onslow Street intersection improvements that we are should be uh, starting here in the next few months. So the York Onslow uh, intersection here is it, it, a catastrophe is just an easy way to put it. Um, it's a very difficult intersection to maneuver, especially for new residents to the area that are not familiar with uh, the traffic in this area. So we have worked to resurface York Street and Onslow Drive up to this intersection. Uh, NCDOT has resurfaced a portion of Onslow Drive uh, coming towards this intersection as well. And with the last piece of this resurfacing project will be from this intersection to New River and Onslow Drive. As we look to the improvements for this intersection and how we could try to lessen the uh, conflict with the the traffic maneuvering through this intersection, we our first thoughts were this would be an excellent opportunity for a roundabout, one of the first roundabouts of Jacksonville. However, as we went through the, the, the design and trying to put this roundabout in there, the dimensions just would not uh, work. Uh, we know that there's moving trucks that come through here quite frequently. So we, we came up with another option, which is going to be a lot easier to maneuver and is also more known to residents of Jacksonville. A T intersection. We're going to be realigning York Street and Onslow Drive to a T intersection. It's very easy to maneuver through and will cause less conge congestion and everything else to this intersection. The big change here is currently Onslow Drive has the, the through uh, travel. We are going to realign this where Onslow Drive merge going into York Street will now have the through travel and York Onslow Drive will have the, the stop movement turning right or left onto York and Onslow Street. Um, the improvements here. We're also going to have to extend this driveway uh, here in order to uh, fill that gap and get the resident out onto the roadway. However, this was the the, the best opportunity that we could do uh, at this intersection. We're currently under contract right now with Morton Trucking to do these improvements. We're a little delayed in construction because of our great weather we've been having over the summer. Um, so, but they are moving right along with our resurfacing project, and they should be working to do this intersection in the next two to three months. But it will be completed this calendar year. Y'all have any questions for me? Not on that one, but I do have one outstanding question here. Yes, sir. Uh, I have a project I'm doing for the city. It's uh, called Revamp DEOP. Okay. Where's the operations plan? And I've been uh, doing uh, advanced recon myself. I happened to hit that when the massive storms came through here. There's an awful lot of streams coming across to some of those roads. And I'm, I'm sure you're aware of those, right? Yes, sir. Um, are you talking in particular in this intersection or this um, area? In that, in that area, there was one. As you go into the uh, New River Basin there, you've got almost like a lake forming. Yeah. You ever seen hmm. that? Yeah. You haven't been there? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm a good swimmer, so I can, you know, I can get out of there, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> but I will tell you this: there's other roads, and I'll, I'll, I'll send you a note or something like that Definitely as I do. identify those because I'm finishing up this project for the city, and I'm looking at some major weaknesses that we're going to have yes, if sir. a hurricane comes. 
I'm just going to let you know that. Yep, I appreciate the info. Um, and I'll look forward to that email, and I'll get back to you on that. Okay. Well, I got. Well, we've got you here. This is not not uh, pertinent to what you just displayed here, but it's another question. The uh, the road that uh, the road that goes into the uh, Phoenix Park Apartments that is off center from Plantation Drive. Yes, sir. Are there plans to do anything with that to uh, align that with road? It goes back. To, it, yeah, with no. Yeah, that road that runs in between River of Life Church and and uh, Phoenix Park Apartments, and then it stops before it gets all the way back to the water treatment plant. Correct. So, are you asking if we're looking at because there's two parts of that? So, there's the connectivity from that roadway through to New Frontier, yeah. where it currently dead ends. Mm -hmm. And then there's also the realignment at Realign Gun Branch yeah. with Plantation. Yeah. Well, so that would be the question, that's, both of those so projects. So we have looked at the realignment with Plantation, and I believe there is actually a project in the works with NCDOT um, to do an improvement at that intersection. I'm not exactly sure what they've narrowed it down to. I can get back to you on that one. Yeah. Um, and then the connectivity portion it is also in has been discussed, but I don't believe that there's a current project in the making. I think that project is being held for decisions on future development and how we move forward from there. But it's it's still being looked at. It's just not been an identified project right. as of yet. How about the how? What is what would the status be then beyond just thinking and putting drawings together? What would be the status of the of the realignment of plantation? there at Gum Branch Road. I'll get is that is that something that's going to happen or is that something that's still just kind of I believe it's in the something that's stage? going to happen as far as how it's realigned or if it's realigned um, is the other question because we've looked at multiple different uh, parts of that as far as actually realigning or making uh, th there's different options that are being talked about there. Something's um, going to happen. Yes sir. Yeah. Um, and I'll get back to you with more information on that as well. Yeah, I like to get to my church on time. You know. well, I'm just <laughs> curious about. Yeah. I, wonder, I yeah. can't get out and plant. It's it a very difficult block. area to maneuver through, so, <laughs> and it's been right. noticed by yeah. the, every it's, agency. Yeah. Now that the development happened, it's hard to fix. Yeah. Yep. You're exactly right. So. Okay. It probably doesn't apply to what you're talking about up there, but the new on uh, Western Boulevard extension. I'm dying to know. How are you going to get out of uh, the new store that they put them cut out all the traffic? I mean, Publix. behind the yeah, Publix. <laughs> How are they supposed to get out? From are they going to put? Uh, is there? If you go in the Commons, they cut out a bunch of trees, so I guess they let the road out in the Commons by. Correct. They didn't get that. There will be really? a roadway connection right there in the it's Commons. Already yeah. bad right there. It's already full with the when you turn in, because when they go to the Jacksonville Common School, you, can't even you have to stop all the way back by the end of Publix just to get into the school. When they have games and stuff like that, so. But that's every morning because I live over there. That's every day. I know because my son go to school over there. My it's grandson. Worse with that, if that's the you know plan. what I'm talking about? They got uh, when you turn in where uh, Starbucks and all of them sit right on the corner, Verizon, <laughs> and you have to stop right there if they pulling out of Verizon. Mm -hmm. That's not the road. They got a, another place cut. That's not the plan. That's oh. a fire break, right? That goes back through there where it was recently cleared recently out clear? that, that will be a roadway connection oh, right. um, like someone said it was a road i don't know it's going to be a new road, road second road yes, yes but they road. will come out behind the longhorn there has yes, to be two there means will be of another egress. connection at western boulevard there will be a signalized intersection oh, on western God. boulevard i had a nice piece of property that could have uh, been I gotta move purchased on. and it would have avoided all <laughs> So much to trap it out there. Just saying. Well, I'm just saying <laughs> that it didn't we have to happen. We can get that information to you as well. It's about how that road is gonna. The traffic light is ten minutes, and that uh, yeah, thing come out of Longhorn and we get that. Any other questions for me while I'm here? That was the only one I had to ask. <laughs> oh, that's where I live. <laughs> didn't know what you was walking into. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he knew. <laughs> Oh, you're gonna so have you a handful. Be started by in two or three months or finished in two or Completed in two or three oh, months. Okay. Yep. We're just trying to get the contractor back on schedule after all the rain uh, delays that we've endured. Yeah. Okay. So, so this road is going to happen, sir. Is this open for roads? For roads? Yes. You got to go out to your. Yeah, you know, we, we are. We're back going at uh, full stream right now with uh, construction. 
You so want it is dry. I like to see yeah, one thing. Like, yes, sir. Gil, you got to stop. Over to my neighborhood, right. Georgetown. Georgetown. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's gonna be there, so. We almost need to build a bypass on this last I'm going rainstorm we had. But the system is. Yeah. The pipe in this dip, it stopped us completely. Okay. This one brother warned on Conover, it was sad. Okay. It, the water was so deep, he couldn't even get out of the house. Hey, Gordon, I addressed that with the city. We're going to be meeting with the staff real soon, and we'll talk about all those issues. Okay. And um, if anything come up before then, then um, um, I'll talk to Wally Hanson about that. So we'll, we'll get back to that. Okay. And I got one other thing. On the last meeting that we had, uh, when I was talking about uh, as far as the sewer systems and stuff, and mean what you say and say what you mean, that's what I was talking about. I guess some of you probably remember that. Uh, some of us might not understood what I was saying, but I didn't really want to call no names because uh, the city said one time we had a meeting, if we see anything wrong with the you know, system, somebody pouring grease and oil and different stuff like this in the system, uh, let them know. I did, but it took them about a year to get get to the situation. And so uh, I confronted uh, Miss Lily and Tracy about it, and I didn't think it was right the way it was done because uh, what I was saying is the city telling the people that lives in the city not to dump oil, grease, pork chop, grease, fish grease, whatever you want to call it, into the system. They didn't want that because it clogs up the system. But yet the county was pumping raw sewer and stuff into the city system, what's the difference? Okay. They'll find me, but let them slide. I don't think that'll be right. Because I don't have the experience in that issue. Right. And when we meet with the city in the Georgetown community, then we can find out the answers. Right, but see, they already cleared it up now. They still come every now and then, but trust. it was done. But see, really, what I'm saying- They're supposed to stop that in July, stop. right? Yes. Or when are they gonna stop it? Oh, that's a good question. Because I thought they were gonna- I wanna say October, but that don't quote me on the okay. date. Um, this, this, within the immediate stop, notices have gone out that they have right. to discontinue that. But I don't want to quote the actual date because I don't want to say something. Don't you right, know what I mean? Right. But I do know the city manager has talked with the county, with uh, Anwasa, and has talked with our public services department. And that practice, everyone's now aware of it, it will be discontinued. And I understand what you're saying, Gordon, about right. that. Cause, but I don't understand all the intricacies involved in that process mm -hmm. and why we can't, as citizens, uh, uh, do that and I don't know what you know I don't understand that mm -hmm. you know I don't know if it's a different process that wasn't, uh, won't allow it to be clogged up I don't know but either way I, like I said I don't know about the process yeah. but when we all you know can meet for yeah. this yeah. we can further actually bring that I information back to this group so we will get a better understanding throughout the committee See, that's what I, that's all I was talking about last time you know and far as remodeling Georgetown remodeling the houses and stuff like that Great job, because I know I said, I said the last time it wasn't nothing done, but no, I didn't mean it that way. I meant that for the sewer system that they was, the system that they, they was going through, but for the remodeling the houses and all that, yes, you've done a great job. The city have. And, uh, but that's what I was talking about, because it kind of upset me, and I didn't really want to call no names because uh, it was a little bit higher up now, you know, so I just left it, left it like that. And so that's what I was talking about for this split different between the, uh, the people that live in the city and the people that live in the county, it wasn't that right. didn't go. Right. Gotcha. We'll, we'll address that real soon. That's good. Thank you. All righty. There's no Thank more questions for Andrew. He's going to scoot out. Thank you for coming. <laughs> appreciate y'all having me. Appreciate oh, he you. He can't go now. <laughs> 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 he can't go now. up our lives. Okay. Thank you. Planning board. Okay. Uh, I actually. <laughs> planning board update. Yeah. We've been waiting on this. Okay. I actually missed our June 25th meeting, so I'm going to be giving you four months worth of planning board. Uh, the meeting on 514 was actually canceled, no agenda items. Okay. Meeting on 611 was actually held on 614, and it was a unified development test text amendment. It had to do with temporary classrooms at those schools that are here in the city of Jacksonville. And what was necessary is to actually 
increase the number of temporary classrooms, those are the trailer houses, that could be used in, and primarily at primary schools at, at the youngest level because of the legislature changes in the number of students in each classroom. And our recommendation went to the city and the city, uh, city council did approve it. We also had a subdivision zoning exception. This again had to do with North Carolina general statutes and uh, based upon laws that happen with the state, we have to come back and change some of our unified ordinance text amendments. And this one had to do specifically with subdivision zoning exceptions. And that was a paper drill, for the lack of a better term. The meeting on uh, July 9th was canceled, no agenda items. And then our meeting on August 13th, uh, we actually also had new elections. Our new chair is Homer Spring. Our vice chair is Doug uh, Lezon. And what we did is we actually just flip-flopped them because Doug had been the chair and uh, Homer had been the vice. We also uh, recommended to council an approval on a special use permit for ABRA, ABRA, Body and Glass, a new facility on Richlands Highway. This particular uh, location at one time I believe was a Mako auto body shop and then it was a contractor supply house. It's right now just an empty shell building with a chain link fence around it. And uh, body shops, because of chemicals, you know, anything like that, they do require special approval by council. And our recommendation to council was yes, they approved it. So that is the planning board update. Any questions? No questions? What I have to ask you about, uh, I think it's the subdivision. Did you say subdivision zoning? Was that passed or that's an update? That, that was, yes. That was a just a change in text because North Carolina general statute mm -hmm. says, okay, this is an exception. Okay. And uh, so the city had to go into their own ordinances and make a pen change. Okay. And, and that particular one had to do with subdivision zoning yes, and, and I believe specifically with items that had five acres or more and things of that nature. Okay. It's going to be a glass place. Now, the trailers for the, you said only the elementary schools, right? At this time, it, there were none that I saw in the paperwork that had to do with high school. Oh. Elementary, so they'll be asked. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. that up. Okay, let's see. Miss Tracy Jackson, Community Development Subcommittee. Good evening, everyone. Just wanted to give a brief update. Uh, you all have a copy of the Community Development Subcommittee mi uh, meeting minutes. Uh, the committee members consist of Marsha Wright, Paula Jones, Steve Forney, and Gloria Whitney. Just wanted to let you know that we discussed the 2019-2024 five-year plan, the action annual action plan, and the fair housing plan that we are currently working on, and wanted to get some input from the committee members. Um, they gave some um, places that we can meet to get the citizens' input, and also some marketing ideas to market our fair housing survey. Uh, we also talked about our projects update in which I just wanted to touch on two. Uh, we have two active projects at 124 Newberry Street and soon we will begin <coughs> construction at 310 Sherwood Road. And also we talked about um, some other projects in Georgetown, the sidewalk projects and some bathroom improvements at the Jack Emiet splash pad. Um, the next time that the committee subcommittee will meet is going to be at 10 a.m. on Wednesday, October the 10th. And I also wanted to just share some accomplishments with you. 
the downtown trail connection, as you can see, uh, we have completed that project that's on the corner, it's at the corner of Newberry and Ford Street. So as you can see, that fence was um, located there and it blocked the access to the boardwalk that led all the way down to Sturgeon City. So what we did was go in and have some connectivity um, accomplishments going on in there. And now the um, residents, homeowners can access that boardwalk. And they really, really like, you know, being able to walk down to Sturgeon City. I also want to share with you um, the 331 and 333 New River Drive. That project has been complete. That was the uh, demolition and it's next to that school. So we're glad to see that that project has been completed as well. And finally, we have a completed project from um, Shorewood Road. Uh, we, at, we acquired that project, that, pro that home. And what we did was we went ahead and demolished it. And now, now that lot is available to reconstruct a um, new home for first time home buyer. So that's part of our accomplishments that we have for this time. Okay, that's it. Anyone <coughs> have any questions on that? Or anything they'd like to ask Christy? Okay, community engagement. Okay. Ms. Lily Gray. Good evening. Um, community engagement, more specifically, our Office of Livable Neighborhood Section has been working um, the last several months in uh, Country Club Villas, which is Myrtlewood, as you may know it. We're working on some rebranding, and everyone has agreed that going back to the original name was a positive thing. So as a city, we're calling it Country Club Villas. Uh, we have met over the last couple months with the uh, property manager, managers, the real estate side of the house. We've also met with property owners. I believe we've had three meetings with the property owners. Several of them have uh, become actively engaged. They have worked as a group to identify their issues and concerns. They have identified solutions, and then they have gone through the prioritization stage. Uh, the last meeting was last week out at Coastal Carolina, and they are very, very um, excited. We're at a stage now where we need to engage the tenants. But before that, um, we're meeting tomorrow with the Neighborhood Impact Team, which is myself, of course, our, our staff, code enforcement, sanitation, streets, police, police recreation, well, I should say recreation, parks. I'm forgetting somebody. And recreation. And recreation. Okay. Um, we're going to meet. We, did a, we actually went out as a team last week and walked through the neighborhood. It's one thing, as you know, to sit in the, in the office and talk about problems. We want to get on the ground and look at things close up from the residents' perspective. We got a lot of good information. Things came to, to life for us. So we're going to meet tomorrow to um, go over what we saw and then work on some more solutions. Uh, even had uh, Ron Massey out there and had a really good opportunity to go in ditches. We walked in ditches behind houses and places that you normally wouldn't see to kind of get an idea of what the residents were complaining about. Um, so that meeting is tomorrow. Out of those, out of this discussion um, came the idea for a neighborhood cleanup. And Pam is going to tell you about a group that she was approached by that wants to do a neighborhood cleanup and how we may be able to collaborate on this particular neighborhood. Okay. So the group is Irreverent Warriors. Um, they've done, this will be their third year that they did the Silkies Run. If you've ever seen Marines that have ran and walked through the city of Jacksonville, they're coming back to do a give back to the city and want to do a community cleanup. And since we've been working diligently with Country Club Bills, that was a prime opportunity for us to go into the neighborhood. So the date that I want you to save is October 20th. And it will be from 9 a.m. till 12 p.m. And what we are doing is they are organizing volunteers as well. And then the city is coming in with staff to come in and volunteer. And we're also going to engage with the residents and make it a full community cleanup day. It's a Saturday, like I said, from 9 to 12, uh, focusing on cleaning up the trash. And tomorrow's meeting will also go into detail of how much can we accomplish within those three hours so we have a game plan 
when we're meeting with the residents and with the other organization. And that's a, a great opportunity for you all to come out and help support that and be visible. One of the things that we would also like to do, if we can build this in as, um, as staff, under the Community Development Block Grant, as you may know, we did a neighborhood revitalization strategy area for downtown. One of the first things we had to do to qualify that neighborhood was verify incomes. And uh, we can use census data to get neighborhood demographic information, but when the neighborhood is so small, we have to do uh, canvas door-to-door -door and talk to the residents. So we want to build in an opportunity to do that on that Saturday. So it may be that you can help us go door-to-door. -door. There's a simple form that we just ask a couple questions. They give us that feedback, and then we can take that data and decide and determine whether the neighborhood qualifies for any additional resources based on it being a low-income area. Right now, the only way we can go in and provide assistance is individual households that meet the income guidelines. If we qualify the area, we can go in and do more uh, comprehensive improvements should this be, we decide this is where we need to go and we can even identify additional uh, funding sources. So that's an activity that we would um, consider undertaking on that 20th. If we can get all the residents out in their home, we can engage them that way and get some, some do some surveys. Also, we, at that time, we could survey the tenants about what their issues and concerns are. One of the things that we know is that we've got issue, uh, issues and concerns from homeowners, but there may be a different perspective from the residents that actually live there, which, of course, there are some homeowners that live there, but there are more tenants that live in that area. So we need to have their voice heard as well. So. I was going to ask you, Lily, because you said the improvements, but a lot, a lot of those properties are by homeowners, right? They're homeowners. They're but individual they're homeowners, they're, homeowners yes, but yes. majority rented. That's right, majority rented. But yes. I'm wondering, I mean, what are the homeowners required to do in comparison to what community engagement would do? Well, homeowners ultimately um, are responsible for maintaining right. their property, right? right? And so the biggest thing that we see is uh, property ma maintenance has come up as a priority as well as crime. And that's where we can partner because the crime reduction component is, is a police issue, but it, it's also incumbent upon the residents to do a better job with tenant selection. So, for example, we will have a um, landlord training on how to um, use crime-free leases so that that gives them more ability to terminate for different criminal activity, should that be needed. How do you select and screen tenants in the beginning so you don't have a, a tenant issue on the back end? So we can address crime by doing more surveillance. One of the things that we started um, last week, one of the complaints, well, one of the requests that the residents had was to put a police substation in the area. That's just how bad they felt the crime is, and that's the support they wanted. That's a very expensive uh, solution, but in working with the police department, they um, have started a program called Front Porch, where they hold their shift change meetings in the neighborhood. So I think she said about eight to 12 police officers literally had a meeting at a, in, a, in the front of a resident's house, and the residents volunteer, and they say, you can use my front porch as a concept, and they come in. So that presence is in the community. Um, she said they can do that at least once a month. And so because we don't know when it's going to happen, that gives you some unexpected police presence. And also we have a new um, community resource officer. Copeland Mills is back on board. And he's actively engaged getting um, to know the residents as well. So that was just one idea. Another thing that came up was we know visually we've got some issues with the trash cans being left out. There's been discussions about removing trash cans, putting in dumpsters, putting in corrals. What the staff uh, decided, going back to owner responsibility, is to do a um, notice of violation and, and adhere to that notice of violation. It's already a violation of our ordinance. Right. Now it's going to give everybody an opportunity. You are now made aware, and then there are consequences for noncompliance. So we're going to see if we could change behavior that way. Um, other than investing in the dumpsters and corrals and building things. It's very difficult physically out there to move the dumpsters. Um, but we did see some well-maintained yards where the trash cans were pulled up to the house and didn't look so bad. So we want to try to get the rest of the, the tenants and the owners to follow that. Um, I'm trying to think of some other things we talked about. Of course, you know, we... 
Did you consider community or a neighborhood watch on this? Thing? They they have considered that, and they've also asked for um, signage. Mm -hmm. They can that area can be designated if it meets the criteria as a drug free um, zone. If you put if you if it meets the definition of a drug free zone, any drug activities that occur in the neighborhood, as I understand it, could be charged as a felony. Um, gives it more teeth. Uh, but yes, they have talked about um, neighborhood watches. The, the, the key now is getting them organized because we have a lot of absentee landlords. But we are going to go back and have these same conversations with the tenants, and they can organize as well, which is typical of what our OLN model is, is engaging the residents that live in the neighborhood, and they organize themselves. We help them organize. They have their monthly or bi-monthly meetings, and they decide you know how they want to govern themselves um we had great success with bayshore they were giving out yard of the months by the time it was all over to encourage positive um behavior in their neighborhood and they were um very instrumental in calling law enforcement when they would see something they felt that they could do that they began to use an app called next door which is a social media platform for neighborhoods so they can post messages and things to be on the lookout for so those are some things that came out of them meeting as a group that we would hope to replicate in Country Club or any other um, Do we have a Jacksonville we app? To? We have a community app for Jacksonville itself? No. no. We don't. So we, we have no way of notifying people if there's a major emergency. Oh, yeah, we down. have that. That's, yeah. Um, yeah. That we do. But we don't have. CTY Connect. Right. Yes. CTY Connect. But mm -hmm. for okay. somebody, okay. well, I was just trying to get to the local community down there right now. Mm -hmm. They don't have one for the local community. Okay. Not, not. No, we have a citywide notification system, but we mm -hmm. really don't use that for this type of purpose. We try to preserve it for emergencies because if not, people will start ignoring it when we really need to get a message to them. Uh, yeah. We, from time to time, we use it for meeting reminders, but we limit just general information going out on that. We use social media primarily to get the word out. It's it's been for several years, and, and this was before Lily and the rest of them got involved with Murderwood, uh, but. To really appreciate it, and we go to early mass at Infinite Prague. So go through that area early Sunday morning. Well, I got to do with and Reverend Phillips here. That's bad I, enough. I understand. But that's when you get the full impact mm -hmm. of the numbers of vehicles, you know, along with the trees growing up in the house eaves and all those other types of things. And, and and it almost looks like it's been a mm, other world war zone at times. <laughs> so, uh -huh. yeah. so I that's just wondering. Uh -huh. Yeah, we do have a communication system, but it's uh -huh. it's used for emergency notification purpose primarily. Water line breaks and things, and we can target. We can target neighborhoods, so we can just send an email to this neighborhood and say, you know, power would be out, in our construction or something like that. Yes. And then we also wanted to follow up. And if anybody had any other questions about Country Club, yes. I did. You, yes, ma'am. Is there a, a lot of in and out leases there, where they, you know, they rent for maybe six months and then they move out? It's not like that. I haven't heard that that's a problem. Uh, okay. From what I understand, they. But what I'm, what I'm getting at is, uh, like is the person yeah. that they call them oh. yeah. I didn't the, ten, the tenants have been there like at least 10 plus years, yeah. so they're pretty much... Not the ones that own. You said there's a lot of rental. Mm -hmm. Right, the tenants have been there. Oh, they've been there long. 10 years renting? Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, yeah. you got to be kidding. Mm -hmm. No, no. They don't bulk that apartment, so they might as well be But you do have a situation where people who, at least people I knew who lived there, don't see themselves as homeowners. I mean, you know, we hear about home ownership all the time around, but you know, you haven't we have never targeted that community in terms of asking, are the people who live here who would like to own their own home? Not necessarily here, but any place. Mm -hmm. right. And so sometimes you uh people need to not just say it in general, they need to look at you and say, Gordon, have you ever thought about owning your own home? You that's know, what I used to ask. That has not, to my knowledge, that. happened in that particular area. So that's why people in rental. That's why I asked, was there a lot of in and out rentals? Because I know it's getting to be that way in my neighborhood. Oh. Because there's a lot of people, they move out, they move on base, and then the houses are empty. One month, two months, someone is in it. Another month, is sitting, now i got four in a line. 
and I'm going to have to call because the trash cans are out, and one lady grasped the dog flannels are taller than Mr. Claiborne in the front yard by the mailbox. But she moved to uh, Maryland someplace and just left the house. I mean, and we have had a problem with it because my neighbor chairs have been stolen and put in the backyard, so we know some somebody's what coming in the backyard smoking or doing whatever they're doing and we're just afraid about them setting the house on fire and you know but so we got a lot of problem with that all over the city so i'm saying you need to my problem is get the landlords because they're the ones that own if they don't keep them up then they need to be fine well we do when we notify the um any property owner it's going to the property owner of record and it's going to the tenant. Yeah, it should um and the, if there is a lien on the property it's of course against the property so that landlord is going to ultimately pay at some point mm -hmm. uh, which he may pass that on to the tenant by raising rents or however you choose to do it but oh, they're ultimately the response it is they are the responsible entity and then so. like you're saying for us people owning their own homes mm -hmm. i talked to a couple of people like that and uh look like to me they get a kick out of not paying light bill <laughs> phone bill Cut and all this rates. stuff like this mm -hmm. it's all in one cahoot and because I, I talked to this one lady and her and her daughter, she got a daughter that's kind of off. And I, I talked to y'all about that one time before, but she didn't ever come down here. And then when I talked to her again about it, she said, and she was paying like 900 a month. I said, woman, you can have your own house. Mm -hmm. That's true. And, uh, but when she got her kick out of it, she didn't have to pay all this overhead. And I said, oh, well, that's where you want it. <laughs> and that's what I was looking at when you said the question about over there. Don't know. A lot of them been there 10, 20 lot years. Lot time you paid all that rent, you could have been and brought a yeah, nice Well, well that's why we, we have a home buyer education course every other month, because that is exactly why. And that's why we have the money management seminars every other month, because that's exactly why people don't know. And education is key. And once we get them in here, we can explain it to them. We've been had great success with getting them to see that home ownership is a more a viable option, or it's even a realistic option. Some people just don't even know it's possible. It's, it's realistic. Yeah. yeah. And so we've we've been very good. Tracy and Pam do a great job with those classes. So, and that's another opportunity when you meet people, like you did, what you do. Tell them the city has a program. We can get you. We have down payment assistance. We have programs with free lots. Uh, we have various incentives and down payment assistance and classes. Classes ten dollars to get one hundred fifty dollars worth of information, uh, with all the industry leaders coming in to share, and we even feed you. Couldn't so. you? Sorry. <laughs> but couldn't you have once a month put that in the water bill? It's on social media. Well, the water bill is Everybody is expensive. don't have social media. Let me tell you about, about the these water. old folks. Right. We 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 have looked at that. That's costly to do it once a month. Well, we also know, if you're like me, I don't even get a water bill anymore because I get it. I pay online. I don't open a I water do. bill. So mm -hmm. people, there's still people out there, but just for the cost of doing it, mm -hmm. it's more cost effective to try to find G10 uh, and social media and on the Facebook page are the three ways we get it out. And, and sometimes and, mm -hmm. they will print mm -hmm. uh, one city page and print. they'll announce our in home news, In the newspaper. Well, that's in what the I'm newspaper. saying, put it on there. Mm -hmm. Because that is one way of getting it out, like we did with beautification. If we had something that was detrimental to what needs to be done, mm -hmm. we had them put it in the water bill. And it was okay then mm -hmm. when they did it. Mm -hmm. So that the old, I'm not talking about the young people like sitting around this table. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about people like 75 and well, 80 they years old no that no, live there in these places. Y'all ain't buying houses. Because you're talking about 30 years. You're getting it. Yeah. They don't make no sense that they don't want the responsibility. <laughs> well, I'm 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 there are some young. older yeah. ones that just yeah. don't know. Our typical home buyer is a little bit under so I got a question. Yes, sir. Now we're doing all this work with like um, country club dealers and Bayshore. Mm -hmm. Now, have we identified future communities that we need to get in before they get bad? We have. We've driven through. I guess we've got about ten, ten? Um, potential locations that we could we could eventually get to over time. Yes. And we, matter of fact, we could bring that list to you um, at the next meeting. Um, and, and this is organizing mm -hmm. the communities mm -hmm. to help self-police themselves. Yes. You know, and, and it started, you know, with Lily's leadership getting into the Bayshore area and initially finding those homeowners that wanted to really push it. And with their assistance then, you know, it allows her to move on and on. You know the, the different locations. 
And we don't have an event coming up, uh, Bayshore of the States. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've been meeting yeah. for three two years, years, almost yeah. three years. Yeah. Almost three and, years. Yeah. and I will say, you know, initially, one of the reasons why we can't go out and do 10 at a time is because we attend those meetings. Yes. We right. staff them as evening time. meetings, most likely, and we can, it's only five days in a week. And so <laughs> to have all these multiple meetings going on, it was, yeah. we realized we just couldn't. So we, what we tried to do was two neighborhoods at a time. And so right now we actually, um, Murderwood is a very, um, Country Club I'm sorry. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Country Club Club. Club. Yeah. Um, is a very active staff, uh, I should say, heavily resourced staff intensive, yeah. staff staff intensive, intensive. effort right now. Okay. So to ask the staff to take on another neighborhood right yeah. now would be a little bit much. But as we get that moving along, we still have New River and we still have, we have yeah. others. Overbrook, if you remember, um, that one, I'll give you an example, with Overbrook. We looked at that neighborhood as, as a city and said that would be a next logical place to go. But when the staff went out and res we re um, uh, surveyed and asked them, are you interested in organizing? If they say no, we don't push it. We've got to have uh, some level of interest from the residents mm -hmm. to at least sit down and talk to us. Yeah. Now, does that mean we won't do anything? We still would. We would still go in and, and offer our rehab assistance and things that we normally offer for residents, but to get them organized, it's got to be a point where they want to actively take engage and take on. We, 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 we meet quarterly. We've been collecting dues. Not dues, but uh, we do a role. Like homeowners association? No, no, no. no, this no, is, no. We emphasize that is not what this is. No, <laughs> not a HOA. That is not what this is. We don't regulate yeah. what you do with your home yeah. or anything like that. Just That's like, like saying the union is coming in. <laughs> no, right. <laughs> but we have We're a, a picnic, uh, uh, a social event. So we're having a, a neighborhood picnic on September 29th. Okay. So we're asking, you know, uh, so we'll be formally coming to City Hall to invite you. And uh, come by. we'll do hot dogs and things like that. We, this will be the second year mm -hmm. we've done that. And it's just a way of people who live there. Because we do have some people who, uh, they cut, they're young, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a, you know, the old concept of starter homes that I grew up with that people don't do anymore. Mm -hmm. They want to step from the car straight into a quarter million dollar right. house yeah. with nothing in between. And so they're nice little starter homes. You can get used to owning your own home. It's a quiet neighborhood. You don't have a lot of traffic in and out that doesn't belong there because people don't even know about it. Okay. There are people who live here in Jacksonville who have never been down there. And we're right here in downtown, right, right, right. off downtown. On the water. 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 Right across yeah. the street. You know, On and, the water. Uh, we're going to talk about the water here in a little bit. So uh, it's a... Uh, okay. I think it went too far, what I was asking. Okay. <laughs> but I also will say, too, we can also, um, I mentioned to you in the orientation, we can do tours. Yeah. We have a van. We can get you on a bus and take you out and show you some of these areas that you may, you would probably drive down streets all day and not know some of these side Absolutely. roads was back there. Mm -hmm. And so it would help to get to know, particularly since Officer Liv Livable Neighborhoods falls under community engagement, to get out and see what the challenges are and what the city is facing and what the residents are, are dealing with. Because mm -hmm. it's not like a city I was born in, in Britain where you drove through almost all that city at one point or another just to get from point A to point B. Here, it's like a jigsaw puzzle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you're not planning on going to where you live, you yeah, never I would never it. go over there never and never go through because, you, first of all, you can't, there's no through. Mm -hmm. When I do my recon for this hurricane and for, this, uh, for the EOP, I'm driving back to some of the areas I never even thought existed. Absolutely. Really. And you know, been I've been I've been stationed time. here 14 years. I don't remember all these, you know. Mm -hmm. They're way out. Mm -hmm. Way out. Okay. So my question was, mm -hmm. right, have you identified them? And are we doing those same things so they don't get to a point where we have to do this mass effort with your staff or with everyone else? You know, like a preventive measure of sending, you know, the warnings about your trash can, oh, yes, yes, warnings yes, yes. about your... Okay, now that's, yes. you know, with the police department, maybe they choose well, a different neighborhood side. to do the front porch thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I will say that um, citywide, all of this stuff is available citywide. Mm -hmm. Police, yeah. code enforcement, sanitation, all that's available. What we were trying to do is for neighborhoods that we saw were aging mm -hmm. and uh, properties weren't being maintained or we saw foreclosure signs, <clears throat> how could we get that community engaged to be more proactive instead of reactive. Mm -hmm. if, if we had resources for you, would you take advantage of them? Let's talk about that. Um, are you notified? Do you know how to communicate an issue to the city of Jacksonville? We're the front door for that. We're the gateway 
for coordinating services um, so that we, you know, if every different department is getting a call, there's no central location. This makes it to where everybody on, is on one page. This is an issue because we've gone out, we talk, we can bring in, we've gone in and, and uh, bought in, like Andrew's team, engineering. We were able to get the ditch improved because we actually sat down with the residents. If somebody calls you and says there's a drainage issue, that's one call. Yeah. But when you coordinate and you really get in there and you start talking to all the residents and you <coughs> listen and you hear it's, it's all of these houses back here, that gets a different reaction. Mm -hmm. And it brings it, it brings a different perspective. So we were able to go in and make things a priority that maybe was known but wasn't necessarily a priority. A priority. Okay. Yeah. And I know you have uh, to give yeah. a hit, but I always, because I have been with the Bayshore since we live there, you know, that I encourage anybody who's watching the broadcast or will see it, mm -hmm. that if they have an interest in living in a neighborhood, by all means, you should absolutely do it because we've had, we've been there for a long time, and as people introduce themselves, like we've been in the house since 1982, and many of our neighbors, you know, have been there. We have a lot of elderly neighbors because that was base housing during World War II for uh, officers housing. Mm -hmm. And then there was a transition as the base became permanent and so forth and so on. Mm -hmm. But uh, so we have elderly neighbors, but they raise their kids and so on. And Duke Power right now is going through doing weatherization to all the yeah. houses free of charge. Mm -hmm. They change it up to light bulbs. Right. They're doing strips on the doors. That's they're doing now. air, con uh, air mm -hmm. uh, filters. And that's all free mm -hmm. because, you know, Duke Power apparently has a program mm -hmm. and they partner. Mm -hmm. So anybody who's watching this, Absolutely. If you have any interest in this, you should pursue it yeah. because uh, it will be very, very helpful in my opinion. But you do, like you said, it's too labor intensive to mm -hmm. expect the staff to stay there for any long, long period of time. You all probably stayed with us longer than you normally would have if we hadn't been one of the first sort of a demonstration right. project. We learned lessons from you guys. Yeah. <laughs> and, and done stuff with Bill. Yeah. 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 Right. Right. You know, so. So, uh, but it's worth it to me to the uh, people who live there because. When you have to live in a place, you want to be safe, and everybody wants to be safe and peaceful and have peace of mind. They don't want to live somewhere where they're always worried about one thing or another. Right. And uh, the only way to really get around that is really not money. It's about relationships. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, I think yeah. the most valuable thing that came out of your group meeting is that you all got to know your neighbors. Yeah. To where now <laughs> they are <laughs> having their own block parties and Christmas parties, and they've, That's right. they've and got and that Christmas neighborhood party. connection now that was missing. Yeah, you watch out for kids, mm -hmm. and when I see cars I shouldn't see, mm -hmm. everybody's watching and see what's going on here, and watching the kids as they go over to the water, you know, to keep it. If I'm home, I keep an eye out because the little kids going to that water too close. Things that we never would have done five years ago. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I think Miss Whitney mentioned we are right at um, seven o'clock. I don't necessarily want to rush you, but. Um, we have planned to talk about the New River update, but this is going to require some time. What I gave you, and I also emailed this to you, was a summary of your um, observations and all the information we collected at the last meeting. And what we would like to do is start working on solutions, possible um, partners that can help with some of this stuff. So what I would ask you to do is take this with you, and then when we come back next month, let's spend some time our next two months in October really working through um, solutions. Feel free to email me before the meeting if you've got some ideas so we can be, you know, further along in the process. But um, I can also share, what I will do is share with you the one that we did for country club dealers. And that way you'll see kind of what that group was, was doing. And this will be modeled after that. So um, don't want you to use their solutions so they may be different, but just get an idea. Um, and so I will send that to you. And now I turn it back over to Ms. Whitney. Okay. okay, do we have a one city one? I think it's one city. <coughs> Anyone have a one city moment? Oh, or one did anything this week? No, they deleted it. Okay. okay. Items for the council, uh, items for the city council of consideration. Anyone have any? Yeah, I, I have one. I was, 
I'm always reading stuff, and one of the things I've read that really kind of concerns me is the uh, eroding home values due to the sea level rise, okay? Okay. And uh, I've noticed that this past week, or the week before last, Jacksonville newspaper had the, uh, the tax evaluations for the homes, okay? It went up some percentage points, okay? The county and the city, whatever. But uh, I also noticed that, uh, and this is an article, and I, I sent it to everybody on the email, I'll do that. This is an article, it's, it's down in Charleston, South Carolina, it's also happened in Norfolk, Virginia, where the uh, water is eroding the beachfront property, okay, and it's the, the houses that normally cost three, four, five, five hundred thousand or a million dollars, and we have that same problem in North Topsail right now. Mm -hmm. I know that we, we're seeing that. Mm -hmm. See, this is uh, eroding the home value, so... I'm trying to figure out, well, we're raising the taxes. We've got to be very careful because some of these homes may not be worth what they originally proposed, okay, was. Well, I will ask one clarification. If you're talking about North Topsail Beach homes, that's outside of the city of yeah. Jacksonville. Yes, ma'am, I understand that. Believe me, and I'm just, I'm, not, I'm only coming to Jacksonville because Jacksonville also has a water problem. We don't know that yet. Okay. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, okay? I mean, uh, my little project I'm doing for the city here, when I ride around, I'm taking a look at the erosion. I'm seeing it, it just from the rain we had for the last month, the amount of erosion we had and the potholes. I'm thinking, wow, what happens if we have a Category 2 or 3 hurricane hit us? The potholes were this last winter. Yeah. 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 And, and what happened, honestly, is any little crack, because we had that one week, of complete freeze mm -hmm. and it never got above freezing. It killed my trees, I know. Well, I don't kill my yeah. palm trees, but w what happened was, and th <laughs> this is a fallacy that we run into here when everyone uses asphalt, you start getting that alligator ribbing mm -hmm. because the ice went ahead and expanded, made that bigger, got some more water in it, we drive over it, and boom, all of a sudden it needs to be really fixed because code for here when you're actually putting in a road is not what it is from say where I'm from Nebraska or up in Pennsylvania where everything is based upon a 48 inch frost line you know everything here is on an 18 inch so what happens is those roads were never built to withstand freezing temperatures you know uh, Something that's where, that's something that uh, is above even council yeah. attempting to fix because most of the roads around here belong to DOT. It's interesting, uh, you mm -hmm. know, I, I'm just saying. But, but I agree I'm with bring, you. I'm bringing, I'm mm -hmm. bringing a, an issue out that may not be an issue today or this mm -hmm. year or next year, but I guarantee you in the future it will become an issue. <coughs> and we need to be prepared for it to deal with it because it's more than just... Uh, the property eroding, it's it's a tax base we use to, you know, provide education for our children, beautification of the city and stuff like that. We've got to play this game the correct way. How do we do that? Okay. Those are the things we're gonna to have to Well, I will say we do have a system for um, grading and maintaining streets. Um, there's a comprehensive system that decides to try to prevent that. Yeah. But um, I can tell you between the money we get from the state, the power bill money, and the money in the general fund for street, street repairs, there's only so many miles of yeah, street right. we can maintain yeah. every year. That's so correct. the system that they have is what we have. Um, I would defer to Councilman uh, Jackson as far as anything else we could do. I would just tell you this week, as far as weather, has just been unusual weather. It has been <laughs> raining like the whole summer. And so there's some things that are nature and we can't control, but I guess, you know, now we're getting into a discussion about, uh, you know, you get to global warming and what all that means for the environment, yeah. but I think that's beyond our pay grade right here. But, you know, when we ask this question is, what is it that you would like to have council consider primarily from a community engagement perspective and also since we are responsible for um, livable neighborhoods are there's some things in streets falls in that it could be you know you want them to have a workshop on street maintenance issues if you see this being a problem i just want to frame the the setting of because when you around, started out with the yeah. beach erosion i want to bring it back down to things that well, this as i go around i do a review for this uh for the eop 
because the city of Jacksonville is a lot bigger than people imagine. I, they cannot imagine how, how much we expanded over the years. And you start going back and looking at some of those neighborhoods and the houses and stuff like that, and you're saying, wow, is this going to manage, is this house going to be able to sustain a Category 2? Mm -hmm. A lot of them won't. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you. And, uh, you know, when I, my last uh, act duty tour, I, I owned a house on Northwoods, and uh, mm -hmm. I had these big 40-foot pine trees up there. Let me... I sold that house, and uh, that year I sold a house, a hurricane hit. And it must have, 20 of those pine trees came down and took off that whole roof. Was, was that 96? 96, Birth right. Birth of Right. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're living in the house that uh, we had purchased prior to that. And uh, I, I really didn't have any damage from Bertha and Fran. I had a couple other hurricanes later on. But that particular year, trees all of Court Street... Uh, specifically what separated the city's garage from, you know, the rest of the city was about three foot underwater. I mean, there was a low spot there, and uh, I'd take my neighbor down there to check on his mother and that, and he used his kayak. But uh, that's why the city's, you know, maintenance department is where it is now versus down in that Sturgeon City area. Yeah. Can I suggest one thing? You mentioned that you're working on a, an assessment of this whole emergency well, yeah. operations plan, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the reason I'm doing that is because I don't think we fully contemplate what it really is going to take. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and, but you're working mm -hmm. on that plan under the guides, the guidance of the police department, emergent public safety? Well, I, I feed them information. They say yay or nay because they don't know as much as I do about it. That's what I did for the last two years. So I guess my, my question, let me reverse. Are you a, because I want to make sure I'm this is I'm not gets, a consultant. I'm just doing a free will. Got you. Okay. Because okay. what yeah. I was thinking is once you do your analysis and right. provide them with the report, then they can look at everything comprehensively, and that report could then be presented to council doing a workshop to say, here's what you found and where. Because I don't know that we want to take something to them. There's not much difference. One at a time. I right. think they need to see a yeah. comprehensive well, picture right. of what you you're doing. Yeah. Yes, I do. Okay. Have you, Have you talked to him about some of the areas he goes back in and cleans up the underbrush on all of the uh, rivers and Who stuff? Who that? Jim Wheeler. Oh, Jim Willie, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. he, he can pinpoint map-wise yeah. where, where you have the problems on the flooding because of the debris that's blocking a lot of areas. Right. Yeah. But then he comes back and, you know, feeds the information to public works and, you know, hopefully tries to get, he tries to clean it up, but sometimes it's far beyond the scope of what he can accomplish. Yeah. Yeah, and I think I think the feedback is important, but I think if it's presented in a way where you've done this assessment, and then we can we can look at it more comprehensively. There's no difference between a hurricane that blossomed in 1956 or 1990, and the one that's probably going to blossom in 2018. Okay, but I can tell you this: the manual is about to going to be the same. The only differences are going to be certain parts of that manual that's going to reflect certain things. And and I'm going through this. And it's 4,000 page uh, SOP. Four thousand. Before you do that, you know the city does have an emergency operations plan. Yes, ma'am. Have you I'm seen that one? That's what I'm redoing. Okay, gotcha. That's what I'm doing for a public safety director. Gotcha. Okay. Well, I would just wait and present that plan to him. Oh yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm through about Annex Five, and I'm I'm looking at this. I'm thinking, wow. Mm -hmm. Just like you said with the uh, the bulkheads for like you say Topsail Beach, which we ain't got nothing to do with that down there. Yeah. But once that ocean rise, once more than the nation rise, you can build all the buckheads you want. Absolutely. It's going to come slam up. I've been here, I've been a little boy, and I've been in Georgetown all my life, and Georgetown one of the highest elevation of Jacksonville. And when we had category one, two, three, and four, the only thing you can do is get out of Dodge. Because where I live, if it come over that hill, Jacksonville is happy. That's right. Ain't no, ain't no buckhead. Totally. Underwater. And I seen, I seen that river rise and come all. If you know where Mike Iafino home is, I seen it come all the way up Mike Iafino home just about to. Uh, what's the name of the church down there? Um, uh, St. Julia. Almost the St. Julia Church. Oh, yeah. It ain't nothing you can do. And just like if we get a Category Four right now, I'm gone. Laguna Bay. Me too. I'm gone. Laguna Bay. It'll be out of. It'll be out of the picture. I seen that water come up over the trusser. That used to be, I don't know if y'all know about the trust or not. It was up high. It was like almost a story or two story. 
And that river went over that. Well, I'm not trying to, you know, cause any alarms here. What I'm trying to say is, as I go along, I'm, I'm redoing this stuff. I'm trying to contemplate where this particular area is. I'm saying, wow, can they maintain? I don't know. Okay. Yeah, it's something I, we're going to be we're going to be finding out. I'm pretty sure. I I would suggest that you work with two people, uh, public safety and public services, because the things that you are talking about are, I think, beyond the realm of this committee, but I don't want to ignore it. And so what I would suggest, and I'll be happy to help happy to help set up a meeting, that that's the group that's going to deal with flooding issues, drainage, citywide catastrophes, more so than the community engagement committee. Well, don't get me wrong, I understand that. The basic I'm talking about is the preparation phase, okay, where you can avoid a lot of this stuff. The mitigation. Mitigation prior, pre-mitigation and post-mitigation. Mm -hmm. Pre-mitigation means you're prepared to deal with anything you can, that you can deal with, okay? Post-mitigation is the recovery efforts, okay, right. and what do you have to do? But we still need but to those are still those the two departments. Those two, those two, those two entities are responsible. Are you talking about, I'm hearing you say that you're, you're actually getting in some kind of a vehicle or whatever. And going and looking at I'm what's looking, going on. I'm, I'm, you haven't been sent out there to fix anything no, or to redo anything. Not at all. I'm just, just traveling it. around. I'm just looking. And see. And I think that's a very important. I think that's it's, it's what really I'm trying important. to think is what I've noticed. We've got to have to figure out how to respond to stuff as it comes. What I'm, yeah, what I'm yeah. trying to do is get it contained in a way that we can respond. Because yeah. we don't, this is exactly what we don't want to do, is go put resources over here mm -hmm. and find out the bigger issue is over here. We haven't looked at the big picture. But then it's, on the other hand, until this happens right here, we know. never will we're get to that. Know. See, the, the last time that manual was you know, updated was 2007. Yeah. What? Okay. How much yes. more time do you have left? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, it's no, it's no it's time limit on it. Right. I'm just doing it. It's something it's that's going to take beyond this meeting. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's what that's I'm trying to get to, because I don't want to hold up this meeting No, don't hold up. I'm just trying to say that's an emergency thing. But what I'm saying when I'm looking at the emergency thing, I'm looking at them saying, why isn't, uh, why aren't we taking a look at this from a different point of view? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that we're not doing that. Okay. We're beautifying neighborhoods and stuff like that for the practicality issue. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, preparation for a cat one, two, or, you know, or three. Mm -hmm. Or, or just another summer like we just had except for instead of it going on for weeks it goes on for three or four months that's right. and you know there could be issues like what kind of think of, think about living in california what is the land the that you're sitting on i want to like, say you know, this let me yeah. say this i can't sit here and say that the city is not preparing for it i'm no, no, not no. Privy they're doing the best to, they can i just want to say i'm not privy to all of the planning efforts that go on in police and fire to respond to a cat force. So I don't want the public to think that we're not doing what you're doing. That's why I asked if you were coordinating with them or working on their behalf. Because it may be that we're doing I'm duplication. Working on on behalf of the public safety director, the okay. police chief right okay. now. Okay. And that that, that that piece to me I think should funnel back through the police chief for and him to him communicate and the fire to chief, I, I, yes. I update them once a month and I say this is what we got, I want to found out. The real issue is we don't coordinate between the county and the military, and that's that's a big. That's the. That. Uh, uh, all right. So we will we ag can we agree that this probably should be through public safety's. Yes, I'll, I'll do that. I, I won't bring it up again unless I see something <laughs> obvious. <on that. laughs> well, I don't want you to not. I want, but we're looking for things that are right in a neighborhood. That this group can address. Right. We, we're not dealing with the evacuation plan for the city. I just want to be sure that we're understanding where we, what this group is responsible for. We're responsible for older neighborhoods and issues, but we're more responsible for engaging the neighborhood, having the neighborhood give us feedback, and sharing that information with the appropriate department. This department doesn't specifically repair drainage issues are prepared for emergency but evacuation. You, uh, you inform those people who have that responsibility. Yes, exactly. Right. Right. Yes. Okay. And anything for the next agenda? Just that uh, I wrote down, I would need to uh, contact uh, sanitation to help people remove their trash cans from the sidewalks after they are emptied because if we do have, you know, a overnight wind blowing and all of this, I've moved several ones out of the street you know, where they, they roll and just roll. The lady live on the hill. Both of hers was down the hill in the middle of the street. So I had my grandson go and pick them up and take them back to her yard. The lady next door to me, she never puts hers back in. And all her stuff falls out and it'd be all over the place. So I just got a call. 
someone need to let them know because it's just the young ones that move in. I guess they don't know. I don't know what it is, but I just can't stand it. So it gets to me. It gets to you. Yeah, really because they want a nice neighborhood when they Especially move in, but they don't want to keep it up. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? And I hope they listen. I think y'all. Any other questions and comments, please? I, I know you're going to do the uh, New River update at the next meeting. Uh, would it be possible to semi have a ownership breakdown? Of uh, New River? Uh, uh, well, yes. we know that, you know, that 600 time? units really? are what used to be town square. Right, 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 right. But, but kind of a breakdown of, you know, I know there's certain blocks of 60 and 40. Yeah, we can do that. You're talking about different ownerships of, of the, uh, the uh, mm -hmm. right. There's about 1,200 units there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 600 belong to seven or so town center. 700 right? town center, and then there are other owners that have upwards of 60 units. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have that. We just have to update the map, but I can get yeah. it to you. Yeah. Okay. And then Nelson, if you ever drive on Nelson, that's pretty much all single-family homes. Yeah. That's a combination of owners living in them or tenants living in them. That used to be the officer circle. Yeah, I remember that. Right. Okay. Yeah. I'm okay. not going to tell my age, but I remember those days. Your key, key dates, dates are on the back of your uh, medals. Mm -hmm. You're also on your agenda. I just wanted to make sure that um, people have um, enough information about the Home by Education course. It's going to be on September 15th. Please call 910-938-5286 to register for the class. The cost of the class is $10 per person, and we would love to have you. September 15th. 910-938-5286. I am. Uh, I'm going to get that. 910-938-5286 to register for the next class. Class size is limited, so please call in as soon as you can. $10 fee. $10 per person. I do have an announcement as well. Um, the Youth Council, their first meeting <coughs> is September 6th. That will be September 6th here at City Hall. We meet at 6 p.m. the first Thursday of every month. And Youth Council is open to all Arnsville County and Lejeune High School students. If you have any questions, you may contact me, Pamela Trafton, at 910-938-6551. 910-938-6551. still wear their shirts? You want them to come in their church? Yes. Current members have a Youth Council promo shirt that they wear on the first Thursdays for marketing. And I also want to add one thing, Marsha, you maybe speak to it as well. The um, Civic Affairs Committee serves as the complete count committee to make sure um, we count everyone doing the census. Can we census? put that on the next agenda? I, I was sitting here and I said, okay. oh, we just had an update this yeah. morning, a pretty thorough one. And we do need to keep this as a standing agenda item, I think, for this meeting. Uh, the agenda. census for 2020 yeah, we'll we be here can before turn. we can turn around. Oh, yeah. And uh, we got, uh, like I said, Civic Affairs serves, we serve as the uh, complete count committee. And uh, by that time, we will know, I think, did she give you the impression that we would know what we're going to absolutely, by law, do about the military? Because in 2000, we did well. In 2010, it was horrendous. And we lost uh, a, a congressional seat because of it. And it went to Utah. And so you've only got 100 people in the Senate, 435 in the uh, U.S. House of Representatives. And they jockey back and forth depending upon where people are. So we want to make sure that we are so on top of this that based on what she was saying this morning, it's entirely possible for Anzo County to, to uh, for us to gain two congressional seats out of this. And there's $1,628 or $23 spent for every breathing citizen that comes into you know. uh, North Carolina based even on the census. Military members will be counted. counted. 
for them. Yeah. In the locality yes. where they're stationed, right. not yes. at their home of record. Yes, which is what happened in 2000. That is correct. Yeah. Yes, 20,000 so, of them. What yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, what, so, uh, well, just from Camp of June. Uh, didn't include Fayetteville. Mm -hmm. So I'd be glad to, we, we can, we'll I'd, I'd be glad to report on that. We'll yeah. add to the agenda because we really need to get at everybody. You know, we need those dollars coming in here. And uh, six, I think since she said North Carolina got $16 billion last year, and we could easily go way over that. And we need the money. I mean, you know, you're talking about roads and mm -hmm. erosion yes. and everything else. Mm -hmm. And municipalities, where are they going to get the money from except taxation? Mm -hmm. Well, this is money we've already been paying out to the system. We just get it back in grants and federal grants and things of that nature. Based and we will not get it. And it's not like you're going to get your check back, like mm -hmm. they keep telling you on TV. No, no, no. That money is gone, history. You either get it back in a to your where you live or it goes to somebody else right. and one it does not come back to you thing to add to that what we would um ask is there going to be several subcommittees created under civic affairs that will uh help with the complete count and as community engagement committee you will be asked to help in some of those roles to help whether it's the uh, homeless count whether it's faith-based whether it's nonprofits, education wherever we feel that you can best serve. We would ask you to also help serve on some of those subcommittees in some capacity, do something in the community to help us um, educate citizens on, about the census. Because one of the things that the lady was clear on saying this morning, this year is going to be extremely challenging because of the, cl the political climate. Um, and we're going to need trusted voices that can go out and, and, and encourage folks to take the census because you know data where it's going to end up is it private is it confidential we need to educate people on mm -hmm. what the um, rules are about census data and that it is protected data but we got a lot of work to do this year especially getting rid of the bath the negative mythology around mm -hmm. that whole issue. And so when you guys start like public service announcements on G10 and all of that oh, stuff. You'll everything. see more like of that as we get closer to it. But you, this is now the middle of 18. 18 and 19. the census actually takes place in April, April 1 of 2020. Mm -hmm. But we only have a window of 18 months yeah, to get okay. ready to roll this thing on yeah. out. So you'll see a lot of publicity in market. This year, the census is going to be done. They're trying to do it all paperless. So it's going to be internet-based. So we got to help citizens that don't have computers get to libraries and other public places where they can do it. So there's going to be a whole but remember shift. But mm -hmm. that this right here, the phone, everybody has one of those. Everybody's got one of these homeless mm -hmm. people have them mm -hmm. because they can't keep up with the resources they need to live the way they do mm -hmm. without this. Mm -hmm. So remember that, and this runs off the satellites mm -hmm. circling around right here. Off. So when we talk to people about, we talked earlier about people not having computers at home, that's an issue, mm -hmm. but it can't stop us because this is ubiquitous. Everybody's got one of these in their pocket. Kids, mm -hmm. wrong folks, and there's everybody. A, there's, a and there's a tool that I'm finding out that there's another to tool use. to be able to connect with those folks. Yes. Um, that I have to discuss at another time. <laughs> you know, we can get yeah. But we, yeah. we, and in order to help the people that many of us are charged to be helping in the faith community, you know, uh, nonprofits and so on, we have got to get them to fill out and complete and sign on with the census. Because all we want to know is how many people's heads hit a pillow at 12 midnight going into 4120. That's all the census really is about. It's a head count of how many people in any given location go to sleep and wake up on April 1st of 2018. Anything else that people are worried about, we have got to get rid of that and make sure that they understand how vital it is to participate in this. Okay. Motion, motion to adjourn. Second motion to adjourn. I second that. Second. All in favor? Aye. Second. We are now. Congratulations, Chairman. Yes.